Serious questions asked tonight over the safety of track and field athletes. It's our top story at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Melissa Rossman. And I'm Dustin Grove. A Huntington High School student remains in critical condition today, two days after a 12-pound shot put hit him in the head. 18-year-old Craig Hildebrand was flown to a Fort Wayne hospital from Muncie Tuesday night with brain swelling and a skull fracture. It happened during a track meet at Southside High School. Hospital officials say they expect him to recover. And nationally, it's been a tough year for track and field athletes. According to a Virginia newspaper, this has been the deadliest eight weeks in track and field history. Since February, two high school athletes and a Penn State University pole vaulter died after track and field injuries. Now, safety experts want to know what can be done to keep track and field athletes safe. Ball State track and field coach Jim Sprecher says safety regulations are needed. They come up with as far as if that would work, I'd be in favor of that. idea would be for pole vaulters and shot put throwers to wear helmets while they're on the field in play. Well, a day after the Met Ball State men's basketball team lost its key member, university officials insist they won't lose another. Assistant Sports Director Tom Kozrowski joins us now with the details. Tom, can you tell us more? Yeah, that's right, Alyssa. Just, oh, just one week after Ball State head coach Tim Buckley was uh, sent to St. Louis University, or excuse me, traveled to St. Louis University to interview for the head coaching job there, he has verbally agreed to a three-year contract extension with Ball State. Now, this is just a verbal agreement, but the contract is worth a reported $120,000 a year plus incentives. The three-year extension would keep Buckley the Cardinal head coach through the 2007 excuse me, through the 2007-2008 season. Now, mind you, this is just a verbal agreement, so therefore uh, Coach Buckley still has uh, the ability to explore other options. But okay. as of right now, it looks like he's going to stay here. Okay, well, thanks very much, Tom. Ball State is changing their policy on towing. News Center reporter Amy Barnett takes a look at the Ball State boot policy. Ball State University police are instating a new parking policy using wheel locking boots rather than simply towing cars with outstanding parking tickets. All right, we'll, uh, we'll have that in just a minute. By the way, if you find your car with a boot on it, you should go to Parking Services, the address there, 317 North College Avenue, to pay your fines and the boot, rem and the boot removal fee. After regular business hours, go to the Department of Public Safety. That's at 305 North College Avenue, or you can call University Police. We'll have more in just a few minutes. Actually, here's that package right now. This is a familiar sight for students at Ball State, but the University Police Department says it hopes to cut down on the number of cars it tows. On Monday, the university will start using these boots to immobilize cars of drivers who have racked up five tickets and $50 in fines. Gene Burton, acting director of public safety, says the boots will save police officers time. Right now, when a parking enforcement officer finds a vehicle on the scoffball list, by the time they find it, identify that it's on the list, call for the wrecker, wait for the wrecker to arrive, actually tow the vehicle, they're anywhere from, from 30 to 45 minutes. The driver will have eight hours to pay off the fines, plus a $20 fee to unlock the boot. However, if the car remains booted for more than eight hours, it will be towed. But Burton says the boots will save offenders $15. Uh, what it does is it saves the person who, who has their vehicle impounded. It saves them having to find their car, you know, have it towed across town, the anxiety of having to go pick it up and, and pay for the wrecker service. It's just a way to make it a little bit easier for the person to... Uh, take care of the situation with Ball State. The Ball State University Police Department stresses not to attempt to drive your car with a boot on. Reporting for News Center, I'm Amy Barnett. And you can go to parking services to pay those fees. And students aren't the only one paying fees. Two Muncie businesses are among nine firms paying fines for violating Indiana's telephone privacy law. L.J. Stone Company was fined over $3,000, while J&L Industries will pay $1,200. The law to prevent telemarketing calls went into effect in January. In three months, officials received over 2,000 alleged violation complaints. The deadline to qualify for the new newest do-not-call list is May 21st. 
A Delaware County coroner's campaign sign is the focus of several complaints lately. Some say the signs, which feature the chalk outline of a body, are in poor taste. Even James Clevenger, who is using the sign, admits his wife wasn't sure he should use it. But Clevenger says he hopes the sign shows people the seriousness of his office. Clevenger was appointed to county coroner for just a year and four months ago. Time now for a look at the first forecast. Great day outside. It Couldn't ask beautiful. for anything better. I know. I agree. Absolutely. Katie? Thanks, Dustin and Alyssa. It's absolutely beautiful outside right now. It's 84 degrees, light breeze from the southwest at 12 miles per hour, so it's wonderful to be sitting outside or riding your bike. Um, we might be seeing some increasing clouds, but right now it's sunny, and I will be back in the studio shortly with the rest of your forecast. All right, thanks, Katie. A small engine plane crashes into an Italian skyscraper today. The cause of the crash still ahead. And a friendly fire accident in Afghanistan. Who's involved? Coming up, you're watching News Center at 530. Italian officials say at least three people are dead, 60 others hurt when a small plane crashed into a skyscraper today. It happened in downtown Milan, Italy, and authorities say they don't think terrorism is a factor. Witnesses say they saw the plane on fire before it hit the building. Airport officials say the pilot was the only one on board, and he reported landing gear problems before the crash. And another plane crashed today, and this one closer to home. The pilot of a single-engine plane crashed down in suburban Broward County, Florida late this morning. Police say the plane crashed down, barely flying into a house. In fact, the right wing clipped the side of that home. Luckily, nobody in the house was hurt. Officials aren't sure yet if the plane was trying to take off or land at a nearby airport. Listen. We have breaking news to report to you this evening. An Amtrak passenger train derailed in Volusia County, Florida. It happened about a half an hour ago. The train derailed, then fell onto its side. Passengers had to pull themselves up and out of the train. Right now, we don't know if there were any serious injuries. We'll have more on this story as soon as we receive any new information. Now the latest on the war against terrorism. Canadian troops have lowered their flag to half-staff today after a U.S. bomb kills four Canadian soldiers and injures eight others. Jamie McIntyre now on the latest on the training exercise gone wrong. In Kandahar, a flag at half-staff marks the worst combat loss for the Canadian military since the Korean War, a loss suffered at the hands of its closest ally, America. We have so many questions this morning. Extensive training for combat is meant to save lives. How is this hat? Good evening, Mr. Canadian friendly casualties, friendly fire casualties. I talked to the Prime Minister last night and expressed my condolences. According to initial reports to the Pentagon, two F 16s were patrolling 10 miles south of Kandahar over a designated training area where Canadian troops were conducting nighttime live fire exercises. Apparently confusing the exercise for hostile fire, one US F 16 pilot radioed he was threatened by enemy ground fire. His request to respond was denied, sources say, unless the pilot believed he was in imminent danger. The pilot, citing self-defense, dropped a 500-pound laser-guided bomb, mistakenly killing four Canadians and injuring eight others. All I can say to you is that, without a doubt, there was a misidentification of the Canadians and what they were doing on the ground, and that was obviously uh, the cause of this accident. In Afghanistan, anguish over the Allied deaths. They are our comrades in arms. For the last several months, we have lived together, we fought together, and now we will mourn together. And from the Pentagon, an official apology. What we do know is some, some very fine coalition partners of ours from our neighbor to the north in Canada uh, were killed. So far, 36 Americans have died in Operation Enduring Freedom, 23 from accidents, 10 from hostile fire, and 3 from friendly fire. And we'll have more on that tonight at 9.30. A Texas hospital's incinerator smokestack caught fire and collapsed today. Authorities say the fire started as workers upgraded the incinerator on the University of Texas Medical Branch campus in Galveston. Diesel fuel stored beneath the smokestack may have fled the flames. The top three floors of the hospital were evacuated, but no injuries resulted from the accident. Katie Collins here now with uh, weather coming up. Yes, you're back in the today. studio, Katie. How and was it outside? It was nice outside. You're also a part of the Ball State 
Storm Chase team, correct? Yes, that's right. Um, the Ball State Storm Chase team is ready to spring into action at the first sign of severe weather. Members met last Saturday for a practice run that um, was to ensure that even in the face of a storm, this chase would go smoothly. Keeping tabs on other locations and calling back to the station for further instructions were the focus of the mock run. Um, Delaware County is dependent on the chase team to alert us if there's any impending danger. That way, members of the community can get to safety. Okay. Um, I will be back shortly because we are going to have some severe storms, so I will let you know about that. All right. Temperatures are well above the normal for today. Um, we saw 87 degrees today for our high. Um, normal 61 degrees. Today's low 67. Normal low is 42 degrees. We will see the sunset tonight at 7.23 p.m. South Bend saw 85 degrees today along with Lafayette. Um, Fort Wayne was at 87, but the hot spot of the state, as usual, Evansville. Um, for our current conditions outside, again, it is 84 degrees, it's partly cloudy. We will be seeing more clouds move into the area as the night goes on. Again, here's the line of clouds that we are seeing right now. It's all of this over here to our southwest that will be coming into our area tonight and making for a very cloudy evening. Um, for the rest of the week, we're going to be seeing this line of clouds move up and through our area and we will be seeing clearing skies coming through around Sunday, maybe even into Monday. On the radar, right now we have some thunderstorms out to our west, but those will be going to the north and probably will break up before they even get anywhere near us. Locally, again, here is what we are seeing, um, they are already to the north of us. The ones that are to our west and could come into the area are small enough that they will break up before they get here. And then for Sorry about that. We're experiencing a little bit of difficulty. For our lows tonight, we are going to be in the 60s. That's definitely not bad. It's going to be a pleasant evening outside. Um, for tonight, we are going to see a low around 67, right around in there. Um, it's going to be cloudy. Wind's going to be southwest at 15 miles per hour. For tomorrow's highs, we are going to be in the 70s, pretty close to 80s. We could see it climb back up in the 80s again if we're lucky. Tomorrow temperature, tomorrow in the morning, temperature will be 70 degrees. It's going to be cloudy. Um, we could see some thunderstorms in the early afternoon. High is going to be around 79 degrees, southwest wind at 10 miles per hour. And for our three-day Saturday, we are seeing rain again, some more rain on Sunday. Monday, we're going to see clearing, but as you can see, the temperatures are significantly lower than we were seeing right now. Um, we're going to see 60s for our highs and maybe even into the 30s for our lows. No wow. more of that 80-degree weather. Not for a while. As long as I can just take care of this cold, get it better. Warmer, colder temperatures for that kind of thing. Probably warmer. Probably warmer. Yeah. Shoot. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Katie. Well, it's been almost two years in the making, and finally, next Saturday, April 27th, you can be a part of the official Schaefer Bell, Bell Tower dedication. Today, workers are putting the finishing touches on for next weekend. The ceremony starts at 11 o'clock next Saturday morning. You can enjoy music from the 48 French-made bells during the ceremony. Schaefer to Tower, by the way, is named after Phyllis and Hamer Schaefer who are longtime university benefactors. And this coming up uh, Saturday, our Pacers are going to be in action, correct? Yes, they are. Despite the what a lot of people thought. Despite, <laughs> yes. The Pacers, they had to get some help from other people in the NBA, and they clinched a spot, the number eight spot, of that more on sports next. Now to the Pacers. When they could not afford to lose, the Pacers put together a winning streak, put together a winning streak to make it into the playoffs. The, the Pacers went, Brad Miller scored 19 points and Jermaine O'Neal added 18 as the Pacers routed the 76ers 103-80 to last night in their fifth straight and clinching the eighth place in the Eastern Conference. The Pacers needed a victory and a loss by either the Bucks or the Raptors to make the playoffs. The Raptors beat the Cavs, but the Bucks lost to the Pistons. By the time the Bucks' score was posted at Kinsinko, the Pacers held a 15-point lead. The Pacers will play number one seed, the Nets. The Nets were 3-1 and one against the Pacers, but they were also a different squad because that was before the trade. Now on to baseball. 
The Cincinnati Reds played an extremely great game today. We'll go to the top of the third inning where Richard, Richard Hidalgo, here comes the pitch, lines it up, and he strokes it deep to left field. It's going, and that is gone for a solo home run. They take the 1-0 lead quickly in the third inning. Now we will go on to the top of the fourth where Brian Hunter sends it deep to left again, and the Astros go up 2-0. Now we'll go to the bottom of the eighth where Aaron Boone steps to the plate, and this is where Cincinnati started to make their comeback. Down 2 to nothing. The stretch and the pitch, and then Aaron Boone sends it deep. This is a three-run shot. This will put the Reds up three to two, going in to the ninth inning, where the Red, where they tied it up. Now we'll go on to extra innings, where a bases loaded walk put the Red put Houston up four to three. Now going to the bottom of the tenth, Adam Dunn stepping to the plate with a runner on second. He singles it into center field. That would tie the game at 4-4 as Barry Larkin crosses the plate in the bottom of the tenth. The Reds go on to win 5-4, pushing them to an 8-7 and seven record, and Houston falls to 7-8 and eight in fourth place in the Central Division. Now on to high school basketball. Muncie Central's longtime coach Bill Harrell has been inducted into another state basketball's Hall of Fame. Harrell, who led Shelby County High School to Kentucky High School State Championship in 1966, was named to the inaugural coach's Court of Honor at Kentucky Basketball Hall of Fame in Lexington. Now on to the Pacers. Austin Crozier, who has recently been listed on a top 10 list that you would not want to be on. That is the top 10 most overpaid players in the NBA. The Pacers forward is making a little over $6 million a year, and the only time he gets is the garbage minutes, despite the fact that some of the Pacers' front court, key front court players have been down with injuries. Alyssa, and Alyssa, I, I realize this affects you. <laughs> I know. Your favorite player. We all know that Austin Crozier is my favorite. And our producer, Phil, happened to get Austin Crozier's <laughs> towel at the last Pacers game yesterday. And so I'm really enjoying just holding this on my lap <laughs> throughout the show. <laughs> that, that is a $6 million towel right there. Alyssa. I know. I know. <laughs> so thanks, <Wow>. Phil. <laughs> all right. Coming up next, a look back at Curious George. As many of us know, Curious George has captivated kids for nearly six decades. And who doesn't remember those stories of the Curious George adventures? Eric Hong now on a legend in children's literature. Here, George, why don't you paint a picture while you wait for your friend? For millions of children, he is story time. Curious George. An inquisitive monkey who always manages to make a mess of things. When he go up in the balloon, Trouble. trouble indeed, but somehow things always seem to turn out all right in the end. You'd think, after 60 years, George would have learned by now. How many of you want to see Curious George now? Okay. To celebrate his special birthday, the L.A. Public Library is displaying rare artwork and memorabilia belonging to George's creators, a husband and wife team who have their own story. H.A. and Margaret Ray were both born in Germany, and after marrying, they moved to Paris. In 1940, just hours before the Nazis invaded, the Rays fled the city on bicycles, eventually leaving Europe and ending up in New York. They brought with them their manuscript for a children's book. Seven books, 25 million copies, and six decades later, Straighten Curious George is still making children smile and think. He wants to learn. He wants to go ahead and, and try everything out. And that's really what we want all our children to do. H.A. Ray died in 1977, Margaret in 1996. But their contribution to children's literature lives on. The popular books have never gone out of print. Curious George may be 60, but his tales of wonder and mischief are timeless. In Los Angeles, I'm Eric Hong. Last look at weather, Katie. That's right. Enjoy it while you can because tonight we're going to see temperatures around 67 degrees. The clouds are going to move in. And tomorrow morning it's going to be cloudy, temperature around 70 degrees. Those clouds are going to be thickening. And tomorrow afternoon we could see thunderstorms. High of 79 degrees. And as these thunderstorms move through the area, we are going to see temperatures fall. Saturday and Sunday we're still going to be seeing rain in the 60s. Monday, high is going to be near 60. We will see the sun poke back through, but we're going to see lows as cold as 39 
nine degrees next week. Wow. Okay, so we gotta pull out those umbrellas one more time. Thanks, Katie. We have an update now on the Amtrak derailment in Volusia County, Florida. According to an official from the National Transportation Safety Board, at least three people are dead in that crash. A sheriff's dispatcher says 75 people are trapped aboard the train. A total of 427 passengers were on that train when it crashed. We'll have more on 930. And coming up at 9.30, Milan Willie will have your weather forecast for tomorrow. Also details on why Indiana farmers will be behind schedule in planting crops this season. This story on tonight's News Center at 9.30. And finally, before we go at 5.30, as many, as many of you know, it's our last uh, week of news here at News Center, our last 5.30 show, actually, for the year. And we'd like to thank a couple of people. First of all, one of our producers, the producer of this show, Phil Nardiello. He's been here for four years produced for four years and we really like to thank him for everything he's done produced uh, the first show I anchored and he's taught me and a lot of other people um, how news how news goes yeah he's thanks a lot Phil mm -hmm. and we'd also like to thank our director and producer manager production manager actually Sonny Wingler he's he's graduating and moving on to bigger and better things and we'd like to wish him the best of luck as well that's right thank you for joining us on News Center at 530 I'm Dustin Grove and I'm Melissa Rossame News Center 43 is an official CNN student bureau be sure to tune in tonight for News Center at 930